What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake and in today's video we're going to take a look at a couple of new coins that you should probably stay away from and GPU tariff exemptions are about to expire. We need to talk about that. Also the 4090 in some recent efficiency test on gaming is producing some interesting results and then let's talk about an old coin conceal and then lastly I want to talk about Caspa and the key to Caspa's future so if that kind of content is why you're here do me a favor hit the like and hit the subscribe without further ado let's take a look at the market first so right now Bitcoin is sitting at 16.9 Ethereum at 12.72 XRP at 38 cents by the way did you guys hear about the delisting off of the Coinbase wallet as well as a few others like uh, I think Stellar Lumens was another one very interesting um, things that make you go hmm Anyways, Dogecoin is at $0.10, cents, Cardano at $0.31, cents, Polkadot $5.40, Litecoin still at $76, not a whole lot of movement. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of these GPU mineable coins. We'll start out with Caspa. So Caspa, oh, did it again. Caspa is down 4%, sitting at $0.008. Cents. Let's take a look at Flux. Somebody mentioned earlier today that Flux was doing pretty good. Eh, it's only up 1.7%, but it did have a nice little pump uh, earlier today, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We got up to $0.59. Cents. Uh, let's take a look at Ergo. So Ergo is $1.44, up almost 4%. Uh, how about Ravencoin? Haven't looked at Raven in a while. Ravencoin's up a third of a percent at 0 .00, or excuse me, 0 0.02 cents. And I don't know, what else should we look at, guys? Let's take a look at Radiant. Can't do that on CoinMarketCap, unfortunately. So Radiant is coming in at 0 .0012, up 4.6% today, so not bad. Anyways, let's take a look at these coins that uh, you should probably stay away from. So I did see this one yesterday, and then also I missed this one. Apparently this one's been out for about 10 days. I did go ahead and take a look at the... Bitcoin talk page on this altcoin chain. It is an ETH hash algorithm. And as you can see from the Bitcoin talk page, not much to write home about. So altcoin launch today. We'll update here later. Join the Discord for details. Altcoin chain is a clean fork of Ethereum proof of work with no pre mine. ETH hash, two alt block reward, MetaMask. And I think a comment in here probably says it best. Let the scams begin. <laughs> I mean, what what is there in this description that would make me interested in it whatsoever other than it's ETH hash? Okay, great. Anyways, the other one looks even worse than that, which is Squishy Coin. <laughs> uh... Yeah, SquishyCoin doesn't even have anything you can check out. The only thing that they have is a website, which is going to take you to this webpage. And the only thing on this webpage is wallets. Yeah. Not even putting in any effort. I, I was hesitant to click on this, but I'm going to show you what pops up. So it's a zip file on my Google Drive by the owner of Scott Belford. So I Googled that name and it's a comedian, or at least from what I can tell, maybe it's somebody else. If you know if it's somebody else, <laughs> leave your comment down below. But yeah, it's, it's a comedian. Unique and relatable comedy stylings. <laughs> so 
<laughs> yeah, stay away from this, guys. Anyways, moving on. Let's talk about this GPU tariff exemption expiring on December 31st. If you caught yesterday's video, we were talking about the prices of GPUs potentially going back up. And in fact, they have gone up. Uh, they bottomed on, I think, November 3rd or November 6th, something like that. And since then have gone up, it was like, I don't know, a couple hundred percent on G used GPUs. I think that was specifically the 3060 and the 3080 Ti. But anyway, so let's, let's take a look at this. So prices of the best graphics cards may get higher in early 2023 in the U.S. as the exemptions on tariffs imposed several years ago by the Trump administration will expire on December 31st. The Office of the United States Trade Representative may renew the exclusion or graphics card manufacturers could try to find a way to work around the high tariffs. Two sources told me AMD Radeon, Intel Graphics, and NVIDIA GeForce Graphics cards are going to be subject to new import tariffs in January. Hardware industry veteran Kyle Bennett of Hard OCP fame wrote in a Twitter post. Another smarter than me, that is not saying much, know how to look that up and get some linkage. If so, December might be a better time to buy. We do not know what tariffs our colleague meant, but it looks like the important tariffs in question are not new. As one of Kyle's readers pointed out, these 25% tariffs were imposed by the Trump administration several years ago to essentially penalize China-based hardware manufacturers, which included not only graphics cards, but also laptops, motherboards, and other devices. The Trump administration then agreed to temporarily lift the tariffs, and then the Biden administration granted 352 exclusions to the tariff rules. These exclusions are set to expire on December 31, 2022. Some manufacturers initially tried to import almost finished products to the U.S. to avoid paying punitive duties, but the list of items subject to tariffs now include things like printed circuit assemblies constituting unfinished logic boards, which largely kills the practice. If the USTR does not reinstate the exclusions, the importers will have to pay a 25% duty on graphics cards starting on January 1, 2023. Meanwhile, graphics card prices have every reason to increase compared to 2019, even without the tariffs. The development of GPUs made using TSMC's 5 nanometer and 4 nanometer uh, fabrication technologies is extremely expensive, and a physical implementation of a GPU with software consists north of 550 million, or excuse me, 500 million. Manufacturing on one of TSMC's 5 nanometer production nodes is also costlier, potentially twice as expensive as making GPUs on TSMC's uh, 7 nanometer or Samsung's 8 LPP. Production costs are also higher now that they were several years ago due to rising salaries in China and inflation. Finally, even transportation is now more expensive than it used to be in 2019. It remains to be seen if the 25% duty will indeed be imposed on graphics cards, motherboards, laptops, and other devices. Even if another exemption is granted, we're not going to see new mid-range to high-end GPUs for the $200 to $300 range anytime soon. So, yeah. Anyways, moving on, let's talk about this article from Video Cards in reference to efficiency on the 4090 with power limiting and undervolting in gaming. So obviously we know what hash rates are already on the 4090, but I thought this was interesting that uh, they're getting these types of results when gaming. So for those of you unaware, I think the total TDP was 450 watts, uh, but with proper undervolting and a few tools, you can actually get 92% of the capability at 232 watts as opposed to the default of 347 watts 
which is saying a lot. Um, you know, I don't know if other GPUs hold to that standard or not, but I think if you drop, uh, what kind of percentage is this here, from 350 to 230, uh, that's, that's a significant drop uh, percentage-wise, and to still maintain 92% is pretty incredible. And then using a power limit at 60%, that's 268 watts and you're still at 94 percent or if you drop down to 305 you're at 98 percent that's that's pretty awesome anyways i just thought that was interesting and wanted to share that with you guys next let's take a look at profitability right now on the farm at the moment of course the only thing going to show profitable is going to be caspa coming in at 80 cents was just slightly higher than yesterday's video. I think we were at 77 cents, but yeah, still not looking great. One thing that I wanted to take a look at was Conflux and Conceal. Now, I've heard through the grapevine that it was Conflux that was going to change to ETHash, but perhaps I was mistaken. Maybe it is Conceal. And I finally got the pronunciation of our dear friend in Discord. It's not Iotapi. <laughs> <laughs> is iota pie so now that i got it right hopefully you guys will get it right it's iota pie so he was asking if i had heard anything about conceal he said he's getting rumblings about conceal kiwi did a crypto or kiwi crypto did a video on efficiency on it which was great but this is like the third time i've heard something about this coin i think i ran across someone talking about a fork to eth hash for security but that's just rumor anyone else heard anything so yeah if you guys have heard anything please leave a comment down below I was under the impression that it was Conflux that was switching to ETHash um, but he said there's there's some undertone going on here and then mentioned that there's also a new pull request uh, which went into mining core to support conceal and uh, apparently Mining Core, this is open source pool software that Gitblock is based on and what they use uh, also to uh, to set up pools. Anyway, so perhaps there is something going on there. It, you know, it poked my interest. So I went ahead and took a look at Conceal's white paper. Conceal's been around a long time. If you guys aren't familiar, it is a privacy coin. Uh, one thing that actually caught me off guard was the fact that it is still very active on Twitter uh, and this may help for those of you who are unfamiliar with Conceal. So what is Conceal? Conceal's network is a private and decentralized blockchain with deposits paying interest without the involvement of a financial institution powered by 100% open source code and is completely community driven. So tokenomics, you got the block reward is fixed at 6 Conceal per block until reaching the maximum supply of 200 million. Uh, Conceal network miners get 100% of the proof-of-work mining rewards, uh, encrypted messages, protected proof-of-work, scalable, dynamic adaptive limits, anonymous payments, um, unlinkable transactions. So Conceal's transactions cannot be linked between the sender and the recipient. Now again, this has been around a little while, so you know, I don't know if that holds true. I, there are several privacy coins out there that aren't too private anymore but uh, it was good to see that they are still very active on Twitter um, it does have still a significant amount of hash rate on it but you know if they were to switch to eth hash or even if it's conflux that's switching to eth hash you know if you're okay with ASICs on the network then you know increasing network security will happen pretty much overnight and that again also will distribute a lot of hash rate for anything that's eth hash which you know i'm all about moving around the hash rates and you know unfortunately you have to kind of play pay attention and play the game and you'll you'll have to switch from one thing to another in times like these but for those of you who are paying attention uh it could be very lucrative perhaps so i'm going to keep my ear to the ground if i hear anything else about conceal or if you guys have heard anything please let me know and then lastly, let's move on and talk about Caspa. So as of, I think, the day before yesterday, it was announced that Caspa's improvement proposal number two for upgrading to Dagnite, a novel consensus protocol 
with unheard of theoretical properties is now out. So essentially what this means is, you know, community votes and it is approved. This is a hard fork. So this is not um, just some, some small incremental change. This is a hard fork. It does change the consensus. Um, but just to kind of highlight what this does or what it should do, if it hasn't already, is solve the trilemma. And there's probably many of you out there that have heard that term trilemma. Uh, but in case you're not familiar with what that is, so you've got decentralization, scalability, and security. And in a lot of cases, you have this common, <laughs> have you ever heard the expression where uh, a mechanic gives a customer an alternative and says, you can pick two out of three, fast, cheap, and good. So you can have good and cheap but it's not going to be fast you can have fast and cheap but it's not going to be any good <laughs> you can have fast and good but it ain't going to be cheap anyways you get my point if if this can solve all three of those trilemmas or dilemmas then this is what we've been searching for uh, this has the potential to replace the existing legacy financial system process transactions for billions of people all across the world and still remain decentralized and scalable that's the biggest problem that a lot of these run into you know transaction speeds are are getting faster and faster but it's always been something that proof of work has struggled with and for it to be the fastest of anything that's out there and still be proof of work is absolutely phenomenal i love everything about it also it just to kind of you know reiterate some of these things that we're doing here so what this essentially is doing is making confirmations adaptable to network latency instead of fixed times so you know you got a block in fixed times on pretty much every proof of work algorithm out there those are subject to change depending on difficulty in some cases but this scales and is able to adapt to network latency which is a really really big deal and again just a reminder this is a hard fork but there is one key to Caspa's success that is way more important than anything that we're talking about right now. And the key to Caspa's success is you. If you, meaning all of us, the community, but us as individuals, do not get involved with this, then you're going to let somebody else get involved. And, you know, there, there's another expression that I like to use. Do you have a plan for your life? Because if you don't have a plan, then somebody else is going to control your life. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. And we do not want this to fall into the wrong hands. It's already happened multiple times. And it's extremely important that you stay involved with this community and that you voice your opinions and you share the success and the results of this project because it's going to do amazing things but where it ends up in the long run is completely up to us and with that being said guys that's all for today hope to catch you on the next one i'm out